I don't care how much money you have in your bank, what car you drive, how handsome or how beautiful you are, how many followers you have on Twitter or likes on Facebook, whatever it may be, who in the world do you think you are? You're a can that holds waste. Your beginning is a sperm and an egg. And your ending is nothing but a dead body that even your own family will, cannot, cannot stand yet want to bury and put you under the ground. Hearing statements like this crushes our own kibir, arrogance. Crushes our own ego. Is that if you ever feel arrogant from a from a, something that you have, from the cell phone that you got, from a watch that you have, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this as means of destruction to you. That's very, very, very serious. Not just that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make that same thing that you are so proud of, that will be the same thing that will follow you in Jahannam and will somehow be means of your destruction. So if it was a car, maybe the car will come and hit the person in general, Allah knows best. But that one thing that you're so proud about, that will be the thing that destroys you. We seek Allah's reference from it. Say, I mean. So I learned something very profound from the Shaykh, may Allah bless him, say Ameen. So I learned if I'm very jealous towards someone, the first thing he said we shall do is what? Make dua from, right? So I ask Allah to bless you. I ask, I ask Allah to reward you. Well, my brothers and sisters, to be very, very honest and blunt with you, this tip is so massive and so powerful to your hearts. I ask you by Allah to apply that tip that the Shaykh has given to us. Whenever you feel that jealousy towards someone, you got a tennis tournament coming up, you lost the match, may God, may Allah make him win the next match as well, the one who just beat you. When someone just bought a nice car and you just a bit jealous, I ask you by Allah implement this. You can hear a lot of talks and it's like, go, go away without taking something. And it's one thing that I'll take to heart and I ask Allah to reward you every time I go through this. I mean, Rabbi Alameen, say Ameen. Beautiful. And I truly believe that when we ever give a talk, whether 30 minutes, 45 minutes, I truly believe that it can change someone's life. You guys agree or not? Agree. Completely can change your life. So do not belittle these few minutes that is being spent towards this. And not just that, one sentence can change your life. I would even go beyond that and say, a smile can change someone's life. I will go beyond that and say, just walking from someone can change someone's life. This is the habit of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and every time you hear the beautiful name you say what? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it's the only thing you come out of this halaqa with by saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 10-15 times Wallahi tarqa al benefit sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He's walking and one of the ahbar of the Yahud was on top of his house and he saw Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walking into Medina What did he say? Hada laysa li wajhi kardhar This is not the face of a, of a kardhar or a liar He became a Muslim Imagine a 30 minute speech, etc, etc. We ask Allah to grant sincerity in our way, for work. I mean, Rabbil Alameen. So are you guys ready, inshaAllah? Ready. Timing. Inshallah, we'll end by 12 o'clock. Okay? 12 so everybody is watching. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock? 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, inshaAllah. Whether I'm done with the content or not, I'll end by 12 o'clock. So if this was a very devastating lecture, so boring, like please change the speaker, know that torture will end by 12.05. <laughs> and if it was so great, then the sadness will begin by 12.05, but you can attend the middle, sc middle school lectures, feel free to do so, inshallah. Rahim. Ali ibn Abi Talib says, Who do you think you are? Your beginning is a mixture of an egg and a sperm that if it were to come on the hand, you'll, be fe you'll feel so gross that you're gonna go wash it off. That's your beginning. And your end, jifatun natina, your end is a body that no one can stand, the smell that comes from it, even your own family, they want to bury you. And in between, you're just like a case that holds waste. Huge, powerful statement. If I, I was gonna say the sentence without saying Ali bin Abi Talib al was ready that he said it. Just to ask you afterwards, how do you feel after I told you this? Who do you think you are? I don't care how much money you have in your bank, what car you drive, how handsome or how beautiful you are, how many followers you have on Twitter or likes on Facebook, whatever it may be. Who in the world do you think you are? You're a can that holds waste. 
Your beginning is a sperm and an egg. And your ending is nothing but a dead body that even your own family will, cannot, cannot stand you and want to bury and put you under the ground. Hearing statements like this crushes our own kibir, arrogance. Crushes our own ego. You like to stop saying that. You say that one more time, I'll call the organizer to take you out of the podium. <laughs> arrogance is so hard, so tough. The point of my talk, which heart of disease I'm going to focus on is kibir, takabbur, ego. And amongst kibir falls racism. When you become racist, it's due to your arrogance because you think you are better than others. The problem about arrogance, brothers and sisters, is one of the, if not the, severest heart disease in terms of the spiritual aspect. Now, kibir is amongst the most serious ones ever. Not just that, this is the hardcore trait. This is the label of Iblis. When Iblis was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go and prostrate to Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, قَالَ يَا إِبْلِيسُ مَا مَنَعَكَ أَن تَسْجُدَ لِي مَا خَلَقْتُ بِيَدِي Iblis, what made you not fulfill the commandment that I have given you to prostrate to Adam? Allah asked him, أَسْتَكْبَرْتَ أَمْ كُنْتَ لِلْعَالِينَ What's the deal? You're arrogant? What's the deal with you? You think you're better than him? And I ask you by Allah to take this part of the ayah and apply it yourself. Every time you're about to do something, hasid nafsik. Hold yourself accountable. When you want to not say salam to someone, ask yourself, Astaghfar, I'm kuntan al Why didn't you shake the hands of that brother? Is it because he's a poor person? Every time you're about to do something and you, your heart is a little moved by it, you ask yourself, Astaghfar, ya majid, I'm kuntan al -aaleen. Every time you're about to sit in a seat, you saw someone from Pakistan or from Palestine or from Syria, something that your culture feels the other person to be in a lower class, you don't sit by them. Ask yourself, Astakbarta am kuntil al -alim. Be very rigid with yourself. Naam, very strong because arrogance can destroy you. And excuse me for being loud and harsh. Excuse me for that. So Allah asked Iblis, Astakbarta am kuntil al -alim. Iblis says, Qala ana khayrun min. I am better than that person. You created me from fire, you created me from mud. Then Allah, Allah says, Get out of this place, you are redeemed. You have my curse, you have no more mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until Yawm al -Din. This is the severity of a moment of kibr. A moment of kibr caused the end of Iblis. That's how serious kibr is. You may say, okay, what about dunya, is it so serious? Being, have the takabbur, and being racist, and that's one of the forms, thinking you're better than others, one sentence of it caused the chaos in the NBA a few weeks ago. For those that know anything about basketball, one of the owners of a team mentioned a racist comment. He says, black people shall not attend our games. That one statement made a chaos in the whole country. Well, I will not exaggerate if I say the world for one sentence like that, and the commissioner of the NBA, the leader of the NBA, he banned the owner for life. So even the non-Muslims agree, kibir is serious. But with all this being said, kibir is being promoted day and night in our lives, like never before. Be arrogant. You know what, go to AT&T before Verizon, because the Samsung S5 is gonna be there two weeks before Verizon. So you get Samsung, you put all the selfies, this is my Samsung S5, because you know what? I'm the top, I'm the best of the best. This whole kind of being arrogant, do this or no one is like you anymore. Oh, you know what? Someone buys this jacket, well, I'm telling you a true story. My sister used to work in a, in a store in the mall where she sells leather jackets. A woman came to her and she said, I want to purchase this and that, a special jacket. He's like, oh, subhanAllah, you're a friend of so-and-so. She just came before you, and she bought the same jacket. That's beautiful, it gets in a match. She's like, oh my God, she kissed her. She's like, thank you so much for telling me this. I want something more expensive. <laughs> more expensive. No, 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 I can't handle this. Astakbarta, I'm kuntil al Why did you make why did you make that decision? Something to ask yourself. So this is how serious it is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear in our sharia. Ah. There's no differentiation. Very clear. We all pray in the masajid, Allah did not say, have a message for the rich people and a message for the poor people. I went to a message in Chicago, south, south of Chicago. 
MashaAllah. I don't know if you guys ever went there. You guys know like the Bridgeview area and Portland messages about seven two million seven point two million dollars, mashallah. May Allah bless them. Say I mean. There's really nothing wrong with that. Inshallah, bidna subhanahu wa ta'ala ask Allah to accept from all of us. You go there, so I'm like, subhanAllah, we know that South Chicago is messed up, sah? It's like messed up completely. But how is this south of South of Chicago? The way they, they've done it, and with the whole MDA issue, the racism came. Uh, a black person came out on, on TV just to express how black people feel from that racist comment, and they add upon this. They said, you guys made the whole scene out of that statement. They're building highways in South of Chicago to differentiate between the cities. Because you're a poor area, and this is a rich area. So we need, we need to be as far as possible. If you're talk, talking about danger, I understand that. If you're talking, you want to sit by that brother or sister because it smell, we understand that. Yes, we do understand that. Because even the angels don't want to be around you to smell bad, right? So there's nothing really wrong with that. But if you just simply don't want to because of arrogance, that's serious. So these things are being made and Allah wants to take those off as much as possible. In Hajj, beautiful example. In Hajj, no matter who you are. Wallah, no matter who you are, there's no like ruhsa in changing your clothes. It just doesn't happen. It's almost impossible. To find a way that, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do Jabarat. You have to do something to substitute if you cannot do Jabarat. But it's not because you're rich, so I'm not going to buy these people and go through Jabarat. Me? Go down? Pick up rocks? No way, impossible. Impossible. But Allah wills that everybody wears the same exact clothing. And I'll never forget that scene in my life. When I was sitting in a, a hotel called Shuhada, a very nice place, mashallah, in Mecca, in a nice hotel, and I saw a brother, Complaining about the, the guide, and it happens a lot, right? People complain about their Hajj groups, etc. So the guy is complaining, he's like, You guys promised me one, two, three, you didn't bring me this. Do you know who I am? He's wearing this as Ihram. <laughs> like, well, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. He's like, If you want to see me in the States, you're going to take you two months just to see me and talk to me and consult. He's like, I can see you right now in two seats of clothes, man. Nothing. Right? Nothing. You're nothing. So Hajj comes to humble you, humble you, and the worst of the worst, when all of these examples are we leave the area still arrogant. And we go back, we do a huge party, make sure next time put an invitation notice, Hajji Majid Mahmoud. And this is not a joke, this is a true story. I was praying Satu Jum'ah in the University of Winter. After I'm done with Salah, I saw a person who was new to the university, said salam to him. He looked like an older man, maybe doing his master's or PhD, Allahu Alam. Salam alaikum, alaikum salam. I'm like, what's your name? My name is so and so. He walked away, and Allah is my witness. He turned back, he said, Whoa, brother, why don't you come back, come back, come back. I'm like, Bismillah, what happened? I am Hajji, so and so. I did Hajj. Just make sure you don't forget that. They call me Hajji, so and so. And he's serious. You guys think it's a joke? Well, one in, in, in many Arabic countries, I'm, I'm coming from the Arabic country, they take so much offense when you don't call them Hajji, so and so, right? By their first name. Sahalala. This is Hajj Fulan, Hajj so and so. So you have this whole title, why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the whole Hajj, make, make sure you are humble, etc. Tayyib, you move forward, brother. Okay, how serious is it? Tayyib, I'm into some punishments for you. Not because, just to scare you only, but just when you warn someone out of love, right? They're like, no, no, don't scare us. No, if I don't tell you there's a fire, because I love them, because I tell them there's a fire, you're gonna run away and you're gonna hate me. No, because out of love, you guys appreciate this, right? I mentioned just about three events. You guys ready? Ready, inshallah? Like, number one. But so before I move that with this, what's kibir? I actually forgot to mention that point. Can you please raise your hand, inshallah, and tell me what's kibir? What's like arrogance? What's, what are we talking about exactly? If someone, a young person, an older person asks you, what's arrogance? Like, what do you mean arrogance? Explain it to me. Raise your hand, inshallah. Only take answers from young people, not from the Only take it from the young? <laughs> okay. Go ahead, sister. Bismillah. You had your hands raised, right? If you think you're better than someone else, okay, that's one of the two components. Perfect. May Allah bless you. Say Ameen. Ameen. What's the other component? Okay. Okay, the, Allah, the Prophet defines it for us. So check yourself. Are you guys ready to be honest with yourself? Bismillah. Number one, al kibr arrogance, batr al haq is for you to reject the truth when it comes to you. And when you know it's the truth. When someone tells you you're double parking, no, I'm not double parking, no. You're double parking, brother. You see that yellow line is under your tire. Well, you know what? In Poland, when you're on the yellow line, that means you're within the... Before I pound your face, move your car. Allah. So the point being is that you are presented with the truth and you reject it, that's arrogance. No matter who it comes from. I guess paying attention? From the old, from the young, Muslim or Kafir, male or female, the mutakabbit rejects it. The mutawadah never rejects it. Is it clear? 
That's something to comprehend. How would you deal when someone tells you, I think the mic, to be honest, let's do this a little more. The conductor is better like this. The speakers are taller. No, it's like this. It doesn't make sense. You know what, huh? Okay, this is the truth. Is it clear? The other part of kibbutz, the second component is what? Ghamtun nas. And that's huge. Ghamtun nas is what the sister, may Allah bless her, said, is that when you feel superior over others, when you think you're better than others, you think, you know what? I'm, that guy from Hamtramic isn't coming to our camp. You're from Hamtramic, you know, you don't even come propose to us. Like, you just, like, you lost your mind. Is it clear? And I've been in Hamtramic for the longest time, so we're in the hood, inshallah. Khalaf. But alhamdulillah, I got a job at Christ, so things a little change. But we ask Allah to always grant all of us humbleness. Say, Ameen. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. So, astakbarta, I always think about this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm going to move to the past in a moment. One time he was sitting with one of the Sahaba, and he asked the Sahabi, he says, what do you think of this man? What do you think of this man just walking? And then the brother told him, Ya Rasulullah, in If this guy proposes to one of our daughters, the guy's getting married. Like, we're going to hold this guy up with our, my sister, my daughter? Definitely. And if this guy wants to like intercede and fix things up, we will accept his intercession. 100%. And if he ever speaks, we're going to all be silent. This man, what are you talking about? This man, definitely. Then the Prophet remained silent. A few moments later, he asked him, Okay, what about this guy? He's like, This guy? Uh, if this guy wants to get married to our daughters and sisters, we're going to get rejected. Rejected completely. And if he were to ever speak, we would actually not listen to him, to be very honest with you, Rasulullah. And if he were to ever try to intercede and fix things, we would never take him serious. Rasulullah looked at him and said, For Allah, Allah, but the Rasulullah said, This is huge, huge, huge. He says, هَذَا مِثْلُ الْأَرْضِ مِلْأَ مِنْ خَيْرِ هَذَا Rasulullah says, if this man, the poor man, the, the one you kind of degraded, or you don't, didn't look at him at a high status, this man, one of them is equal to the first one had he filled the whole earth. Allahu Akbar. Completely different lens. Completely different lens. So this one poor man that he would propose and we're all going to reject, one of them is equal billions and billions and billions of that first man whom he just praised. The way Allah looks at us is from our hearts. That's why, our brothers and sisters, we never judge people's intentions. We never judge people's intentions. Not because someone does this, does that, you judge someone, tell them to keep in mind. Tayyip, what's the punishment? Number one, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, remember, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, بَيْنَمَا رَجُلٌ يَجُرُّ إِزَارَهُ مِنَ الْخُيَلَاءِ خُسِفَ بِهِ فَهُوَ يَتَجَلْجَلُ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَى يَوْمُ الْقِيَامِ some, something as simple that you're walking with the clothes that you have, a nice watch, a nice shirt, you're feeling very arrogant by the car that you just parked. Due to that arrogance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow the earth to swallow you, i.e. you will be destroyed in this life before even moving forward. You will live in misery before even moving forward. And then once you die, Rasulullah says, You'll be just basically going down and down in earth in terms of punishment, but this is above Zakh, we don't know much information about. Is it clear? But in this hadith, I just mentioned a point, I mentioned another hadith when I'm explaining in English. In this one it says, if you're dragging your clothing out of arrogance, and طبعا the fiqh matter comes, right? Below the ankle, above the ankle, brother, please explain this. This is not the right time, but I'll slightly touch, slightly touch, khalas. Rasulullah says, whoever does that, the clothing, have you go under the ankles for men, not for sisters, sisters, you should go. More, right? The fact of I think it's sunnah to go this, but it's not sunnah to do with this. You're sunnah to go as low as possible. Tight. So for, for the men, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, whoever drags their clothing out of arrogant, they'll be destroyed with this, right? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu in an authentic hadith, he told you Rasulullah, but sometimes my clothing slips and one side, because they had the izab, right? Like the, you guys don't want to say izab, like a, that's what we say, towel if you wish to say. And then sometimes it drops. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you do not do it out of arrogance. You do not do it out of arrogance, that's why some ulama, they derive from this, that therefore it's not haram to have it at your ankle or, or under your ankle. Is it clear? And obviously there's another opinion which, which is clear as well, is that if you have it like that, it's haram regardless. It's not really about anything, it's about the concept. Is it clear? But the point being, Rasulullah said, definitely, there's no difference of opinion about what? Yeah. But what, what part? Yeah. Is that if you do it out of arrogance, then definitely you're destroyed. Tayyip. Now we move forward in the hadith that I mentioned also is that if you ever feel arrogant from, a, from a, something that you have, from the cell phone that you got, from a watch that you have, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this as means of destruction to you. That's very, very, very serious. Not just that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make that same thing that you were so 
proud of, that will be the same thing that will fall you in Jahannam and will somehow be means of your destruction. So, if it was a car, maybe the car will come and pet the person in Jahannam. Allah knows best. But that one thing that you're so proud about, that will be the thing that destroys you. We seek Allah's refuge from it. Say, I mean. Tayyip. The other thing Rasulullah says, I cannot stand the arrogant people. I don't want to be close to them. What's the hadith? The hadith says, Rasulullah إِنَّ مِنْ أَحَبِّكُمْ إِلَيَّ اللَّهِ طَابَكُمْ مِنِّي مَجِسَ نَسَأَ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْنَا جِمِيعًا مِنْهُمْ أمير رب العالمين The closest people to me and the most beloved to me يوم القيامة are those أحاسنكم أخلاق those that have the most beautiful manners not more صلاة not more this this and that right beautiful manners وَإِنَّ أَبْغَضَكُمْ إِلَيَّ وَبَعَدُكُمْ مِنِّي مَجِسَ يوم القيامة الثالثون والمتشدقون والمتفيهقون and those that are so far away from me I just don't even can, can stand them. Who are they? Those that are taught so much and al mutafayyikun and al mushaddiqun The Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, what's al mutafayyikun He says, al mutakabbirun Those that they are, think they're better than others. They keep calling this man, Ya Abid, Ya Abid, Ya Abid. Ya Abid, why Ya Abid for? We have to go beyond that level. There's 0% tolerance when it comes to arrogance. And I'm being a little bit specific with the Arab specifically. Because when it comes to the black people, it becomes so bad. Yeah, the Abid came and fixed this. No, don't use that term anymore in your existence. من كان في قلبه من قال ذرة من كبر لا يدخل الجنة. From today, be ibn Allah. You gotta struggle by stop saying the word Abid. No more. None of that nonsense. Period. For Allah, you might be doing the most great, greatest of acts of worship by calling once in your life, just once, saying Abid. Allah, this can take you to Jahannam. And Allah told us this because Iblis said that one sentence, even though Iblis was an amazing worshiper, but one such that he refused, Allah calls him Lanati ilayomiddin. So don't use these terms no more. No more N word. Brothers and sisters on Twitter, the N word is becoming so simple. None of that stuff anymore. No more degrading other people for their race, for their height, for their color, whatever it may be. Is it clear? Just make sure you note know this very important. Rasulullah in the last punishment I wanted to mention, he says, Yuhshar mutakabirun. Allah, this is such an amazing, amazing hadith. You know when you're arrogant, how do you walk? Like you, you, you walk that you try to pump up yourself as much as possible, right? Like you walk, especially in the recent times, like you do this, as many movements, like you try to like take as much volume as possible, right? Like, like someone get, get a bigger door, right? A bigger stairs, right? Whatever it may be, give me a bigger microphone, just give me some big stuff, right? You know what? I want to boost my vehicle on the biggest car in the world. It's like arrogance. I want to take over the spotlights, huh? Look what Rasulullah says. يُحْشَرُ الْمُتَكَبِّرُونَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَمْثَالِ الْذَرِّ فِي صُوَرِ الرِّجَالِ They will be resurrected in Al-Qiyamah as tiny ants. That's, that's their size. Yawm Al-Qiyamah, resurrection! People running, whoa! That's a human being that was just an arrogant person in dunya. Was so tiny, as small as an ant. The Rasul says, فِي صُوَرِ الرِّجَالِ يَخْشَاهُمُ الذُّلِّ So humiliated how tiny they are in Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Nothing, not even recognized. فَيُسَاقُونَ إِلَىٰ سِجْنِ فِي جَهَنَّمْ يُسَمَّا بُولَسْ This is a place in Jahannam specific, a prison, sijjid. It's called Bulas. Then Rasulullah SAW explains what's so special about this place. This place is under the rest of Jahannam. In what sense? تَعْلُوهُمْ نَارُ الْأَنْيَارِ يُسْقَوْنَ مِنْ عُصَارَةِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ قِينَةَ الْخَبَالِ These people in the bottom, the arrogant ones in that Bulas sijjid prison, that's the title of that prison, There'll be people there under those being punished on top. So their drink and their food is whatever melts from the bodies from top. That's arrogance. It's huge. It destroys society. When people are arrogant, this conference can't, go, can't move forward, by the way. You guys know that. If the, if the organized are a bunch of arrogant people, this will not work. They don't want to work together. This is the right thing. No, that's the right thing because I said so. Because I have that degree, you don't have that degree. Because I am better than you, because you're uneducated. Don't ever use these terms. So serious. Rasulullah remember this, every time. Rasulullah had great companions, right? The best generation were the Sahaba. But there were two Sahaba that got into an argument, back and forth. And you and got into an argument, one of the Sahaba cursed the other. A human being, we all do mistakes. Remember, Sahaba are human beings, they're not angels, right? And they're still the best of generations. So when that person got cursed, he's like, you know what? 
Yibna Sauda, oh you son of a black woman. Even at that time there was something degrading when you call them, oh you son of a black woman. So that black Sahabi was so hurt. Was so hurt, like you didn't say, oh you're a liar, because you being called a liar is very serious, right? Like you call and a kadab, I'm a liar, also was a liar, right? It's very serious. Let me let me ayyu be shay mazmoon, like he did not like accuse you of something that's bad. You went beyond that by saying something about I have no control over being black. Yabn al-Sawda. He didn't say, oh you haram, oh you thief. <laughs> Nothing. But that man, like you, you, you're to ayyir me, but only you're, you're making fun of my mother and my skin color. That's your, your ultimate curse. That's how messed up you are. That this is the, the worst curse I can ever give you. That's the society that we live in. That Sahabi went to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Said, Ya Rasulullah. I got into argument with one of my our friends, and he called me Ibn Sabda. Rasulullah got so angry. Got so angry. He went right away and went to that man. He says, Atu ayiruhu bi ummi? Are you making fun of his mother being black? Are you degrading that person because they're black? Are you bringing back these ignorant understanding from the time of Mecca, Quraysh, before this Prophet came? And Islam came to try to take this off from the roots and now you're bringing it back within Islam? You're calling that person Yabna Sauda? Then the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, he cursed me first. And, and as, as something generally, Ya Rasulullah, when you get cursed, it is known in our society that you curse back by cursing their mother and father. And this man, being black, that's how it goes. Because when, if you have a degree a black person, you just remind them that you're black, by the way. That's how like, the ultimate curse. Then you know, he said, that's how we are, Ya Rasulullah. Then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he tell him? Inna kam ru'un fika jahiliya. You're an ignorant person. Was very strong, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Zero percent tolerance, zero percent. He's like, yeah, you know, okay, I hope you get rid of this attitude, inshallah. No, no, no room for this anymore. No room for this. That Sahabi, He's an old man with white hair. Is it Fini Jahala? I'm st I have still have some ignorance after reaching all that age and wisdom. He's like, Inna kam ru'un fika Jahala. Naam. Yes, you. I have some ignorance left in you. So that man stopped crying and crying, and now he wants to fix his arrogance. What he will do? And now we're going to shift to the action items and conclude, inshallah. And if there's time, we're going to move forward, inshallah. Khalas, Bismillah. Now, what will he do? This man, what do you think he will do? Raise your hand. And for those that do not know the hadith, what do you think this man will do? Raise your hand, Bismillah. <laughs> for those that do not know the hadith, MashaAllah, a bunch of religious people, MashaAllah. He's going to go apologize, right? Beautiful, he's going to go and apologize. Allahu Akbar. Are you guys ready to apologize for those that you wronged? Are you ready for this? So this man didn't just go and apologize. He went in front of Bilal. The man who was mocked was Bilal in the Rabah. That man was a white guy, if you wish to say, just a white and a black man. When he went to him, he apologized. He said, I'm so sorry for calling you this. Please forgive me. And he put his face on the ground. And he told, Ya Bilal, forgive me, please forgive me. Put your shoe on my face. Put your shoe on my face, Bilal. Put it. Because if there's any arrogance in my, in my heart, I want to take it off today. It's, it's over with. I'm telling you, one sentence can change someone's life. One sentence. That man felt it. The truth came to him. If you reject it, you're super arrogant. But this man took it. And that's why the Sahaba are the best of the best. They were able to overcome this. Ya Bilal, grab your shoe. Step on me. But did Bilal do this? He didn't do it. Allah Akbar. Then they forgave each other. Alhamdulillah, they're the best of people ever walked on earth. So we we'll learn from this. If you ever have been arrogant towards someone and they sensed it and it was obvious, go and apologize. Go and don't think this lowers your level. Wallahi, it doesn't. Whenever you apologize, it increases your status in the sight of Allah Taala. Many times we think when we say sorry, it lowers your status, and that's not true whatsoever. This man felt arrogant. I wanted to apologize, and look how honored he is in 2014 until today. This man who, who basically was racist. Now he is what? Super honored. Subhanallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be among those who realize our mistakes and end up 
fixing it as soon as possible. Say Ameen. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a heart that is always conscious of the things that go around us in a way that if we detect something that is wrong, we might ask ourselves and we change right on the spot. And we don't worry to impress any human being on the face of this earth. Rather, we only impress Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One time, there was a girl and a man who were married, but they were both slaves to a master, okay? So they were slaves to a master, Mughith and, and Barira. Mughith was the guy, Barira was the girl. Look at Rasulullah and how he behaved and how he was so far from arrogance, just to learn from him. Mughith loved Barira so much. Mughith is a male and Barira is a female. Barira, she doesn't want to be a slave to the master anymore. She kept going to her master like, free me, please free me, I don't want to be a slave to you anymore. That's the mentality that was there, right? Then he says, no, I will not free you whatsoever. This, please, I insist, please free me. He's like, okay, you want to get free? Sure. Give me this much money, then I'll call you anti -hurrah. You are free. Then she went and collected money as much as possible from Aisha and all other ladies and men around, give me this money because I want to buy my own freedom. But here gets all the money and she goes to the master. He's like, here, here you go. Here's the money. Now, I'm free, it's like anti -hurrah. Now, from the Shara perspective, if a hurra, if a slave girl and a slave man are married, and a slave girl becomes free, she's hurra, she has the option to continue with the marriage or not. She has the option. So, since she has the option, and then she, she chose to what? She has children from him, from, from uh, Mughif. What happened? She chose to leave him. <laughs> no, 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 no. So she chose to leave him. Mughif was crying so much the whole city noticed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, authentic hadith, he says, Al-Abbas, Ya Abbas, Hal ta'ajab min hubbi mughif li barira, wa min bughdi barira li mughif? Isn't it amazing? My brother is so amazed by it. He's like, Abbas, can you see how amazing it is, how much mughif loves barira? And how much barira hates mughif? Isn't it unbelievable? And Abbas says he was walking behind her in the streets of Medina, crying. He said, come back to me, come back to me. Now, Mughif comes to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the ruler of the whole Ummah. Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah, can you please like hook it up, like intercede? Talk to Barira. I'll tell you, you know what, like, we were slaves, remember the old days kind of thing? Like, you know, we got children between us. Can you please intercede for me? What Muhammad Sallallahu do? You want me to intercede for a slave like you? Was he arrogant? A'udhu Billah. Did he say, I, I think I have time for you? Never. He said, I'll go for it. Allahu Akbar. He didn't say, oh, Shaykh, I got this, is that some simple man who's unknown in the community, but you, there's no credit after I help you, no one's gonna know about this. And someone who has a big name, I help him out, everyone knows about it. No. Rasulullah he says, I will go for it. He went to Barira. He says, yeah, Barira. You know, Mughith is, is a good man. Rajulul Salih. وَمِنْكُمْ أَوْلَادِ You guys have children together. Remember that you got children between you. So why not go back to him? Allah, I love the question of Manira. You know what she asked him? What she asked him? Are you forcing me? No, not forcing. Are you ordering me? Is that an order? Allah Akbar. If he said yes, what do you think she would have done? سَمَعْنَا وَطَعْنَا Allah Akbar. She had no arrogance in her heart. She had no arrogance in her heart. He said, لا, بل أشفع. I'm just interceding. She said, if it's Shafa, I did not know, I don't want him. What did Muhammad Sassan do? I came all the way here to you, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, and invest me from the people. Well, he's going to go back to him, well, he's going to go back to him. <laughs> did he do that? <laughs> if he went to go back to Al-Abbas, that what, didn't work out. She didn't listen to me. He said, whatever you want, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A qudwa fi He says, okay, whatever you wish. And he just walked by. He didn't enforce, he didn't make fun, he didn't go and bash you, like, yeah, I hope no one here is going to be like another barira. <laughs> None of that stuff. Nothing whatsoever. Very respectful. No kibber whatsoever. And the worst of kibber, the worst of kibber is what? I want some intelligent person right here to give me the worst of kibber. What's the worst level of kibber? For you to reject the truth and for you to reject. It's for you to be arrogant towards Allah. Allah tells you to do one, two, three. I'm not doing one, two, three. Allah says in Surah Al-Ahzab, wear the hijab, this is and that, jilbab, and so on, and there's a criteria. Yeah, I'll think about it when I'm ready. That's the worst of arrogance. A man from Rasulullah he's eating with his left hand, Rasulullah says, eat with your right hand. 
He's like, I can't. He says, Mustafa, may you ever be able to do so. The Sahaba swear after that day you can never move his right hand away from it. Because he said it out of arrogance. Mustafa, and Allah is my witness. I went to a dinner without mentioning any names. And I, I know the father is not that religious. But I tried maybe perhaps the son would be the means of helping his father. So I was telling the son while he was eating with his left hand. I'm like, Habibi, kul bilimin, eat with your right hand. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah The father said, La, don't eat with your right hand, eat with your left hand. I'm, I'm also going to eat with my left hand, huh? He's like, why are you guys making religion so complicated? I want to eat with my left hand. Why eat with my right hand? Why? You know what? I'm eating with my left. He's, he's a righty. That's it. He's eating with my left. <laughs> Pure arrogance. And the worst of arrogance when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it clear? Every time an order comes, do this, don't do that. Haram, halal, sami'na, wa ta'ana. Can we please take this lesson at least out of this halakha, inshaAllah? Every time you hesitate from an order from Allah, ask yourself, astakbarta am kuntari al-alim. When our brothers and sisters are told, Respect your parents. And the second worst arrogance in the, amongst the human beings is when someone is arrogant towards their parents. First of all, it's so stupid to do so. How could you be arrogant towards your parents? When they're supposed to be arrogant towards you. You're supposed to be humiliated. They can remind you every day that I change your ugly diapers. <laughs> every day. That, that, that crushes, crushes your arrogance and pride. But it happens that the son and the, and the, and the daughter, we seek Allah's refuge for having such children, say Ameen. And we ask Allah, if we have such children, for Allah to guide them to the best. I mean, Rabbil Alameen. How could you be arrogant to your parents? That's another very, very severe thing. And Rasulullah takes it as one of the major sins. Okay? With this being said, in conclusion, how much time do we have left? Five minutes. Kullu five minutes. Are you aware of it? Five. Allah is like five and four, nine. May Allah bless all of you. Say Ameen. Okay. Six to be exact. Six? Akhadi But you have a newer phone? I got Samsung S5. What do you have? Aslan, <laughs> Barta. Now, obviously throughout the whole talk, throughout the whole talk, I've been mentioning action items. I was doing it on purpose, throwing one a a item after the other. Asking yourself, as the And you're going to avoid the Abid word, and you're going to avoid the N word, and any racist comment that can ever come in your mind. That's it. No more racism after today, inshallah. You guys ready for this, inshallah? The other thing that we talk, spoke about as well, how to apologize. It's, n it's never wrong to apologize, rather it upgrades you and never degrades you. مَنْ تَوَاضَعَ لِلَّهِ رَفَعَ Whenever you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will elevate your status. And Rasulullah said another hadith, is whoever humbles himself to Allah like this, and he kept going down and down and down and down and down, Allah will honor you more and more and more and more and more and more. So the more humble you are, the more izzah Allah will give you. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi sometimes brothers and sisters will do some work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so secretive, but Allah yaftahum. And Allah exposes them because Allah loves them. Because they try to be all humble, but Allah wants to upgrade them the whole community. You know what? You need to recognize these people. But I know, I, no one's supposed to know what. But that's it, done. Allah wants the people, whole people to know that this humbleness of that man took him to that level. How beautiful is it? And I hope many of us experience this sweetness when we are so humble to Allah and Allah allows us to give us some signs of that fruit of being humble. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. So being humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, remind yourself that you are nothing. That's the first thing we began. Remember your beginning, remember your ending, and remember what's in between. A candle holds weights. That's a human being. It's Ayyad Natalib saying this, right? Just something to remind yourself. Umar Khattab, beautiful statement. One time he was behind a wall. No one was watching him. And he was the Khalifa of over 26 countries. Not one, 26 countries. He was talking to himself. And the whole idea of talking to yourself is very powerful. Very powerful. He says, Bakhin, Bakhin, Ya Umar. Amir al-Mu'mineen, the leader of the whole Ummah, Umar, Wallahi ya Umar, la tattaqiyanna aw la yu'adzibannaka Allah. Oh Umar, if you don't have taqwa, Allah will punish you. He's talking to himself. How do we know this narration? Anas bin Malik was on the other side of the wall. <laughs> he was humble, Allah upgraded Umar. Ask yourself your questions. Sit with yourself, why did you do that? Why, why when I just walked with that group of brothers and sisters, I couldn't have changed my walk? <laughs> Ask yourself, always be conscious. The way like, you know, you know what, okay, I'm going to show my watch because it matches my belt. It's very obvious. I, I, bought, I bought this for $200 just to match my belt. I can't, I can't walk like this. I'm going to walk like this. You know what, this can be sunnah. But it's all about what? The heart and the intentions. So that's why you ask yourself and you remind yourself. Rasulullah